was hoping, hoping to catch a sunrise, but it's over the top of these buildings and mountains. Crescent moon still out, appropriate enough. It's woken up again by uh, the call to prayer. I'm going to try and call, crawl, climb to the top here to see if I can see the sun. But I knew I'd miss the sunrise. I was awake, I mean, it was dark, but it was cold. Only uh, say half an hour or so ago. And it's visibly, well, you tend to forget how quickly the sun rises once it's up. But that is pretty amazing. I just missed it, you just missed it, just a moment ago. All the residential lights, or almost all of them in this area, right out there, blinked off just as I got to the top of this run. Anyway, big complaint is it's extremely cold. I suppose that's my fault for not researching it properly. I did check it out before, I, day before I came here. I've got a hat and gloves, which is the crucial thing. Brought them just for the trip from the airport and back, <laughs> back home, but let alone here. But uh, main thing is, I don't know. Maybe I'm a city boy now, a big city boy, because I felt more at home in Amman almost than here. It's just too quiet at night, even though I don't go clubbing much and so on. It's not, you can kind of feel the buzz on the place, and there's nothing much happening here at night at all. I mean, there's places you can go, there's, I suppose, a club or two, and there's things to do, but there's not much just to sit and watch happen, you know? Anyway, it's uh, only 6.30, and I've got up specially out of bed just to come here and try and catch the sunrise out, thinking that these mountains and buildings would preclude that, because that is east, that is west, so the sunset was very nice. But I uh, can't miss the sunrise, but it's still nice to see the sun slowly coming up, and I can see all this from my window quite, quite adequately. Anyway, today looks like being a full day, if only because I have to get up early <laughs> and go to bed late, but I must get one day and get it over with. I may leave early at this rate. I get it all done today and tomorrow, who knows. That'll give me a bit more spare time. I don't know. Felt building under construction now, look. Okay, finally in Petra, been accosted by the usual street urchins. Bye, good luck. Which is this man? Started off as 12 dinner. Huh? From where? Me? England. Oh, lovely jubbly. <laughs> Do you hear that? Lovely jubbly. How come everybody knows Del Boy? Yeah. You know Del Boy? No. Today, we have many people. Not today, maybe tomorrow. Uh -huh. Is your wife from where? No, I just met her. She's from Poland. Oh, Poland. I don't even remember her name. <laughs> Look, all the money from uh, Petra. Nice. Look. Just look. No, no. No, no. No. Have a nice day. You too, my friend, and you keep doing that, okay? Thank you for the bite. Sold me some postcards. He started off at 12 dinar, and the dinar is almost exactly one pound. So that's 12 pounds. I said, come on, man, it's way too cheap. Way too expensive for me. Then it keeps on going down the price, down the price. I'll give you three, I'll give you three, I'll give you two. <laughs> I finally get three for five dinars. Like, okay, now, he needs some money. But if I did that for every person I meet. But, you know, this reminds me just some things I've seen on TV of of you know, Arizona and some places. I would expect to see John Wayne or somebody stroll out. Most impressive part.
parts yet. This is the first kind of car building I've seen. It's also a cave of some sort up there. It's a nice place to chill, I must say. Might be worth staying. Just for that. Okay, I've taken liberty of climbing up the main off the main trail, which is here, up to the mountainside here, from down there. It's actually not that difficult. Uh, you go up to the side there and over along. Reminds me a little of Penarth Cliff, climbing Penarth Cliff as a boy. Uh, this is one of the little caves off to the side, and I think they Lord knows how many of these. So, I can easily imagine this is going to be a two day stay. I've already paid for two days. You know, they charge you pretty, they've increased it twice over the last uh, couple of years from 20 a day to 25. Uh, and now up to uh, 50 a day and then they charge you an extra five each day so to encourage long stay so I thought it was well worth an extra five for a day extra but I have to go on the main trail I was going to be doing this all day it reminds me a lot of you know film and movies of Arizona and places like that I half expect to see John Wayne riding out of the, of the area out of the hills and you know, Indians to appear on the hillside, the mountainside. Okay, James and Co. Just to prove you, Daddy can climb, or at least could when he filmed this. It's me going down one-handed, you know, which is slightly dodgy. Bear in mind, I'm holding a camcorder. Yeah, that's that difficult bit. And now it's all basically rough, rock-hewn steps down the side, like that. Almost there. I was with a Polish lady, but she's well gone by now, unless I start jogging. I've forgotten all those. You know, those rocks have been moulded too. Look at them. I completely miss those. That's extraordinary that I managed to miss those. This one, for example, and the one next to it, and the one down there. How did I manage to miss that? It shows you how much grandeur is here. And this is just the opening. I haven't got to the main section yet. I thought I had a problem with the memory card then, I thought it had been filled up or something, so I had to sit down and it's right to the entrance here of, <laughs> um, I assume is the route to, well I know it is the route to, uh, that they use for Indiana Jones, this is the route in the movie. They don't actually show this bit, but it must surely be it, to where the Holy Grail was kept in that temple, which is actually the Petra Treasury building. And I got here, this spot, and the memory card stopped working. Isn't that spooky? And I thought, oh, no, I won't get to film anymore, let alone Jerusalem. I just messed around with it, it's okay. Another two hours left, but it still isn't much. Maybe I'll have to adjust the settings on it so I can record more and reduce quality. But anyway, this is um, the entrance to the really great bit, I think. And at the end should be the Treasury Building the Indiana Jones backdrop and if I don't come back that means I've drunk from the wrong cup clue it's not made of gold and this alone is pretty impressive this little area I just walked into the only thing is 
these tour guides, uh, many of them are very professional, very polite, but it's more or less constant again. Um, I'm sure many of them are offering excellent services, but I don't really have the time here to do that, or really the money. Right, look, I guess the moon's still out as well, look. You see that? Yeah, yes you can. See Neil and Buzz on there. Carries on. You have 25 family, you are, you're still until now in the Snake Monument place, you're still in the cave until now. Yeah. Not far from there, about half an hour walk, 40 minutes. Great. You live in the cave, you make prayer, yeah. sleep in the cave. I'd love to do that, I honestly don't think I have the time. But thank you. It's pretty amazing. Okay, this is it. Again, reminds you massively of uh, Westerns. This is uh, now the route into the now if I remember correctly from everything I've seen once I turn this corner. Okay, well this is it, this is kind of the jewel in the crown of the whole place. There are many, many buildings um, that are, are as big or as elaborate, but apparently none that's quite as both. And I'm not quite, can't quite remember just how old this is, but it's extremely old. And this is the building that was used for the entrance of the the home of the Holy Grail and in Jan Jones Last Crusade and I thought it looked amazing then. And you can see what I've used it, it just looks like somebody's built it so long ago and nothing's been done to it. I mean that's basically it and in, in a place where it's had so little rainfall. Uh, that explains why it's so well preserved. Some weathering there. I suppose, but this is it. Apparently, they won't, you won't let, unfortunately, won't let you go in. And I did want to try and get a big image of me just coming in down the trail there, which is the cave, they, or the, 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 the valley, I suppose. Not sure what I've got the word now. <sighs> to go up to it, you know. Then. But I uh, can't quite see in there. But they won't let you in. There's um, more stuff down there. But uh, it would be lovely to go in, but they won't let you. And then, like the uh, thing the other day, there's plenty of guards, guards here and plenty of people around to see me. So it is impossible. Too bad. But uh, presumably there's too many visitors and they just would cause too much erosion over time. Sad. Some camels then. 
So that's where we come in, and that's actually where they did actually. Want to put a no thanks. On the Indiana Jones movie, they actually used it. Pretty good. So I've been offered a chance to use his camels. I'll negotiate now. Um, I still haven't, haven't seen much of the city. I don't think that much. I mean, there's so many little buildings and so on, and things carved in the walls. Just a little chat with a Bedouin lady. This tells me she's Bedouin. It wasn't her, I don't think. There's another bench further up the road there, where I've just come from. Over along there. But these are the caves, or one of them, along here. Pilko. <laughs> Carl Pilkin the stayed in, in the Idiot Broad series. So there's tif two different routes now. It's branched off and I'm taking the uh, one to the right which goes up. And just behind this cave here, this mountain, there's a little cave in there. Uh, is, um, I'm not sure what it is. Uh, is it Royal, former Royal Palace? It looks a bit like the uh, treasury building that's uh, been uh, copied slightly badly which is still no mean feat. But down there leads up to uh, Byzantine something. Oh, these are royal tombs, that's right where I am right now. But the thing is, it's a bit like Morocco in this place. I don't know why these people are living in here when we've got to pay 60 pounds for two days, or 55 for one day even. But 60, uh, sorry, 50 for one day and 55 I've paid for two. Mm, yeah. And they're constantly uh, approached by hawkers. First guy, little kid in, I think I filmed him, I'm not sure. Um, wanted 12 dinars, a pack of uh, bloody postcards. Eventually, he offered, you know, they were being offered at one dinar each, which is what I would pay anyway. I and mean, if he'd offered that at the beginning, I would have uh, put, taken it, you know, just to give him something, because he can't live very well if they're doing that. I mean, he's, and he's like 10 or 11 years old. But it just reminds me, I haven't been there, of something like the Grand Canyon or something. But you, you've got to try and get off the beaten track a bit, even though I'm only slightly away from these people. And he's got these stalls here which appear to be empty. You could actually take some in from them quite adequately or easily. But, you know, it, it's just you've... you've no thanks. Lady asked, wants me to drink, to come and drink tea with her. This is what the Bedouin lady asked for. So I just fancy, and as, as I was telling you, I've, you've got to get off the beaten track and have a bit of a chill out. But here, she kind of broke my um, <laughs> train of thought there. Uh, you can just get off and uh, relax. What's annoying is, is, is people constantly trying to Hard, pre hard, you know, kids especially, and, and, and women, trying to hard do the hard sell, more or less constantly, if you stay on the main route, so, got to try and get off a little. Um, it'd just be amazing to be here on my own, with maybe one person, a friend, let's say, who really knew what they were doing. And I found a couple of people I think I basically do trust, but right now, I think I just want to walk. I don't know. I don't know the extent of the place. Maybe I should have researched it a little bit. I know it's big. There we go. Okay, this is a little further along that path. This is uh, an ancient tomb for some... I don't know, Byzantine or Assyrian, not sure. I'll read up on it later. Kings. Pretty sure that up there is the, is the modern Petra. Um, that I'm staying in it only because I recognise the view I would have of these mountains. And they are very impressive. What 
is that over there I'm looking for it. A royal palace, I think, from what I heard. So you can't even see those from up there because the 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 worked side, the, the side which has been processed by man, is on my side, not on the hotel side. I'm finding and dealing with all these people though. Well, hey, the, the the walk is quite difficult. Maybe I should just accept one of their offers and ride on a donkey or a horse. But of course I have allergies, even if I don't mind paying the extra money and I can get a reasonable price and it's worthwhile, I'll probably end up you know, with tears and blocked nose for a good part of the day. A couple of hours anyway. I think I can go in there, and so I will. Okay, the trail divert, uh, diverted once, and now it's diverted a second time. So anyway, anybody, anybody is worried, watching this and worried I got lost. Well, hey, if you're watching this and I'm still alive, obviously I'm okay. <laughs> uh, it's still, well, this doesn't remind me of Penarth at all. It's, well, much more impressive than Penarth cliffs. It's got holes all through it, and I'm not interested in any of those who have actually ex been carved out over the centuries or the eons, because if that's the case, there's loads of them, and they've been filled in by erosion or something, so I suspect those are actually natural. But what cause is that kind of honeycombing effect? I don't know. I don't know how Carl Pilkington felt. Anyway, fair way up. I'm going to find out I'm far up. You know? Not that far, maybe 100 feet, but... Decent enough drop. Once again, I hope you can hear that, it's the Muslim Islamic call to prayer. It happens regularly throughout the day. And I don't really need to bother with an alarm clock here, because that's coming from the town I'm staying in, which is up there. And it's about 6.30 or 6, yeah. It seems to be every half hour, or, you know, every couple of few hours on the half hour, I have to learn more about that. I wonder if the guy realises his voice can be heard all the way out here. It's not too disruptive, by the way. It's uh, not too early either. It's helpful today. Anyway, I'm walking up, I can't remember the actual name of the place, the name of the thing. It's uh, the Al Zahir Trail or something like that. But it's a long, long thing. I'm near the top of it now. That is. Pretty impressive, that looks very you know, ancient, doesn't it? You can easily imagine you're going to find the Holy Grail or something mysterious. But I'm thankfully and in the top, it will be a hell of a lot easier going down, of course. But there's still so much to see. I think I may all have to hire a donkey or a horse and you know, to hell with getting a runny nose. Might do that tomorrow though, we'll see. Bye. Okay, well I finally reached it, the peak of this, uh, I actually call it a mountain, well maybe it is. But it's a uh, trail. Okay, and that is the peak, and I'm assuming you can get out that way rather than retracing my steps, which would be easy. A lot easier than getting up here, I'm telling you. So I think. Or maybe up there, that's not actually part of the city of Petra though. That would give you an excellent view too. They're not of the mountains though, not of the city. So, here we are. Jason climbed something. I'm not actually all that tired. Uh, could do with uh, something to drink though, I've got some water with me. So, uh, 
But it still is a fraction of the city I've seen. I know. Not sure how much. Maybe as little as a tenth. Don't know. Maybe a quarter. But I don't envision doing this again, at least not this way. If I come back, it'll be, you know, a bit more expensive. I'll pay for camels and all that stuff. Maybe even go with all the Bedouin who are constantly approaching me to set by and sell stuff. Yeah. Left to everybody. Hope you enjoy the view as much as I do. It's more than technology for you. Wish my hand was as good as keeping steady. Okay, the Bedouin guys who camp on top of that mountain gave me a free cup of tea. I've been refusing them all, 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 all along, the Bedouin, uh, because they're just, from my experiences in here and in Morocco generally, it's always, you know, uh, in Jordan rather, uh, is it, and in Morocco before that, it's, it's, it's never free. But it was. But they do try and sell you other stuff, not these guys, they must be fair, so I don't know what quite what their situation is. I mean, not exactly bona fide Bedouin, I'm pretty sure the guys who live out in the desert um, consider them, you know, Bedouin light. <laughs> anyway, they directed me down this path, which is a little off where I, at the, the summit I just was, which is right at the top there. So I can look down on the treasury building. There it is. That's the Indiana Jones thing again. I'm going to go down there and get a better view. And um, actually down there. It should take me down there. If there isn't any route apparently straight down there. There is, but kind of thing over those mountains I think. Or over those hills. Over those cliffs. <laughs> over that gorge. But he is recommended to me and another person separately. We use a guide if you try that, so I probably will just go the way he came um, rather than chance it, yeah. Um, but I think it's one o'clock now and uh, gives me four hours to get back to where I came from and I'm still not sure how much of the city I've seen, I'm going to check that out shortly, I've got a map, but uh, I've got tomorrow again to do it. But after that I think I'm going to hustle, I'm not going to book anywhere online again. Um, I don't think, because I might go to Aqaba and either if I like it enough I might stay a night, if I don't, or even longer, who knows, but um, the whole point really was to go, the original thought was to go to Jerusalem, that was why I bought the tickets, and then um, I thought well I'll go into Jordan and do Petrit as well, got diverted uh, to Amman because I missed my flight, due to you know, the way I felt, and so I came to Petra first. But now it's like a bit of a rush to get it all packed in. So even Jerusalem, I have to go there anyway, because Tel Aviv is en route and that's my flight home. But there we go. Anyway, let's start walking, shall we? I was going to leave the camera there to sit whilst I walked into shot to see, uh, show you how kind of alone I am right now. Other people have come back from this spot, I think, but I've certainly seen nobody else here since the Bedouin. Okay, again, not as dangerous as it looks. I'm holding the camera way out. So you can see more than me, actually. And you should be able to see, yeah, the treasury building. Okay. It's my stuff. No one else around, as you can see. If only it wasn't a facade, I'd said. Imagine if uh, this was all undiscovered, just like in Raiders or in Indiana Jones. 
and there was a huge canyon building in there. It'd be great, wouldn't it? Especially if I was one who discovered it. Anyway, I don't really see any way. I'm, I'm sure there is, but uh, I'm not going to try it on my own. This has been a bit adventurous. Just know, as you can see, there's nobody else here. Uh, people do come this route, and Bedouin said I could. But uh, there you go. See part of the new town up there. So no obvious way I can get down there, so I'm not gonna try it. I'm certainly gonna risk it. It's Bedouin guys hoping to give me a tour. Start off at 18 dinars or 18 quid. So I'm going to walk back the route I came, which will take about an hour, I suspect, to get back to Treasury. But that still leaves, takes me on here to about 2.30. Assuming it takes longer than that, it's 3 o'clock, it's two hours left. So I might go to the other parts, we'll see. I may as well cram as much as I can. I'm supposed to be back here tomorrow, but I want to have a, I know. Maybe a more leisurely day here, if that's possible, you know, just enjoy it. This camcorder is acting up, I don't know if it's a Okay, again, you want to hear how high up I am? Hello! Hear the echo? This is Jason Stone from Panath, South Wales, via London. Panath. That's what Panath sounds like. Ironic, because Petra, the new town, vaguely reminded me of Panath. I know it looks absolutely nothing like it. But it's got a very good view of the surrounding area. There's a long hill that leads to the centre of uh, the tourist area. Again, like Panath, Beach Hill in other words, and so on. I'll come all the way down now. I've reduced the quality on this image because I'm running a little low on space and I don't have another memory card and I don't want to buy one. Okay. see me over there. I'm just out of camera shot, maybe. Um, I've reduced the camera quality because it's running a little low on space, it's from super fine to fine. Hopefully it doesn't hurt that much. But uh, this isn't all that high, maybe 150 feet, but it's, listen to this. Good job nobody's down there, eh? Anyway, as I, as I said, it's taking me a while. I still want to go up to, I think that's the church up there. Byzantine church. But I've got tomorrow. And even when all this is finished, I'll be done on the, it's the 18th today. I've got two more nights actually officially booked before I leave and you know, check out, apparently, Officially is 11 a.m. So I want to go to Aqaba, see what's the situation there. I have to um, go on to Jerusalem. I'm not gonna, I, I, I've spoken to a few people and I think it's best if I don't pay the fixed prices. I knew that anyway. You know, if I went back to Morocco, I wouldn't pay the fixed prices over the internet, low though they are. So I'm gonna go to Aqaba. If I like it, I might book the place. You know, it's because it's on the sea and I haven't seen it. Other than that, 
regardless, I'm going to move on to Jerusalem because I have to go to Tel Aviv, which is not very far away. So I may as well pass through Jerusalem, even if I only just spend one day there. But it's, um, it's still only halfway through, but hang on, let me fill. It's on the 15th on that, so 23rd. Well, a little under a third of the way through, really. But I mean, it, it's surprising how quick the time goes, and you have to plan. Anyway, bye. Okay, I decided to change my mind and go with a mule. I've walked a lot today. Uh, it's two o'clock. I want to get back to visit the centre, especially as we're coming back later. That's the drill, anyway. My new friend here. I don't even know your name, my friend. My name is Mohammed. I'm from Bedouin. Yeah. Welcome. Where are you from, Mister? So Mohammed is going to show me uh, a better route and also get me off my feet. Okay. Uh, there is the Byzantine church. It's just too much of a walk for them one day. Uh, we'll leave the rest till tomorrow. Okay, so here we go. Excuse me, listen to me. Hmm? There's the mosaic, the white cover. Mm -hmm. Byzantine church, mosaic. And behind him down, museum, restaurant. So that is the church? Yeah, Byzantine What is church. that building up there then? This tomb. Oh, tomb, oh, I, I see. Okay. Yeah. All right. I told you, my friend. Here the way he go to the entrance. Yeah. Go back to the entrance. Yes, way. Sure, sure, sure. Okay. Where do you want to go now? Just show me lots of interesting stuff. Okay. Well, lots of views, lots of interesting stuff. As much as you can. You want the view for the view for the As many buildings as we can manage. If we can't go that route, that's all right. I'll do that tomorrow. Yes. Um, I want to take you from here. Sure, okay. I want to show you a nice thing in the way, okay? Thank you. All right, we'll do that. Tomorrow here? Yeah. That's the plan. I, I take you to the mule. <laughs> yes, to no. the mystery. Okay, maybe. Yeah, maybe. Whoa. Hold this one. Okay, Hold well. The so there we go. I'm not going to stop. I think I'll stop filming now. Okay, Monica here is doing well with me. Apparently, she's taken the weight of a very fat American for 200 kilos, 400 kilos. which is about double what I weigh. So, well, I'm always concerned, I always have been about little donkeys and whatever carrying me. My own also concern is that I've only been horse riding twice. I've never ridden a donkey before. Uh, I do have allergies, as you, some of you may know. But uh, they never kick in until after I get off. That's, I don't know what like, that is. But I'm trying my best not to touch Monica and also I'll try and remember to wash my hands before I touch my face or whatever when I get off. Um, in the meantime, not doing anything. But that's my concern. But even if that happens, it won't be too bad. It'll be an hour or something of crying and you know, bloody my, my face watering before I recover. So it's not too bad. It's, so I think it's worth it, really, because I, I can't handle any more walking. Well, I can, but it's going to be leaving me exhausted. Or well, my feet exhausted, anyway. Not me, but my feet are tired. Blistered, I think, and feel them. This <laughs> is so my friend Mohammed, my guide for the day and I dare say newfound friend, and two of his three children. What's your name? Mona. Mona. It means like the moon in Arabic. And you? Adam. And Dan doesn't even speak any Arabic yet, so Adam. hardly English. Yeah. Fun, yeah? I'm at uh, Mohammed's house. It's very nice. Warm. Better than I can save my hotel. So I'm having a good time with him. Speak to you later. Here I am with uh, Salims, Mohammed. Salim, Salim. Is this your extended family or your friends? Family, mm -hmm. family. This, this wife for my brother. This wife for my brother. So your wife for my brother, in -law, your yes. sister-in-law. Yeah, sister-in-law. Invited me round to a lovely house after a lovely meal at Salim's. And they all seem to find me very fascinating. <laughs> this lady has eight children, here they all are. 
<laughs> thank you for your hospitality and thank you for keeping me warm. Shukran. Shukran in Arabic means thank you. Thank you. Here I am. We're in the top of this treasury building with my friend Mohammed and his friend who I met earlier. This is all you can see. It's that dark out here. Apart from this lovely place, can I step inside? So you can barely see, can't you? Nice though. Oh. I'm gonna see Petra by night. That's all I can say. Okay, this is Petra at night, seen from the uh, opposite of the uh, building. Better switch off, I'm not getting much light. This is bizarre.